All right, all right. Welcome to a 2v2 matchup between Marshall Spirit playing under the name Ji Yanling and uh, Linger going up against uh, what I'm just going to call him J Perez Imba. J Perez Imba and also Irepi. All right, Peru, Bolivia versus Spain and Colombia. And, and uh, I was kind of curious about that with the name like Ji Yanling. Um, it doesn't sound Peruvian, doesn't sound Bolivian, doesn't sound Spanish or Colombian. Um, doesn't overlay, over, doesn't overlay, doesn't work with 2v2. Um, pads overlay or the uh, W3 booster currently does not work. Um, I'm sure as soon as pad up, updates that um, everything will be working once again. I am still glad that the replays are still working though. As we're looking at a blacksmith, um, uh, what is this? A barracks? blacksmith farm no alt there is the altar of kings so interesting build order coming in from imba we'll keep a close eye on that whether or not this altar of kings is an indication of a delayed um human hero or a tavern hero only time can tell coming back around here um crypt lord first with a uh, ghouls so what this could be is uh, this could be frontline ghouls and beetles with riflemen behind 2v2 strategies are often much faster paced um there is during the early portions of a 1v1 game players you, you know you're really trying to feel each other out you're trying to do a little bit of harassment to get a little bit of that lead in a 2v2 game um two players attacking one base is enough to actually completely shut them down and is a great use of time especially if well their partner doesn't choose to help and then that becomes another 2v1 um, and fight later on. Hunter's Hall and Ancient of War getting trained up. Attack. Keeper of the Grove going to be doing a bit of creeping by himself or perhaps doing a little bit of harassment. And down to the south here, it is going to be Paladin and yeah, Rifleman getting a trained up. So it is a delayed Paladin Rifleman basically trying to have an army that is nearly unkillable with Holy Light and ad additional Devotion Aura making well damage really not stick to those units now um oftentimes i see undead with those crypt fiends as the as the main primary range units but instead we're going to be looking at uh, the human bringing the range units to the battle and also interesting that the, it is going to be a crypt lord first as it is going to open up beetles and perhaps allow for impales to do a bit of damage as well um or a little bit of stunning moves as well all right more peasants still getting added off over here. Keeper of the Grove and um, Huntresses should be trained up right behind this. Linger waiting to tech the tier two expansion oh, of um, the attacked. Night Elf. Martial Spirit is already underway here as there is no expansion attempted down here just quite yet. All right, in comes a Paladin. Paladin could try and put some pressure here. And this is a, a, a interesting spot as the Paladin Rifleman. The Paladin can actually cannot actually help his brethren or his ally at all. Um, interestingly enough. All right, Keeper of the Grove gonna perhaps get an entangle off right there, get some damage onto that Acolyte, and all that Paladin can really do is deny that Acolyte if he wants to shoot it down. Nope, unable to shoot it down right there. Keeper of the Grove at 260 hit points and dropping quickly as the Riflemen are getting some easy shots off. All right, Paladin just wants to try and do a little bit of leveling or creeping, unable to do that. Meanwhile, down to the south here, Irepi, um, I believe he was trying to set up an expansion unable to do so as the acolyte that was on its way over got shut down all right one keeper of the grove oh uh, irepi gonna perhaps finish off that ghoul ghoul one more shot trying to get line of sight right there gonna get the line of sight and now trying to back away another ghoul down over here was taken down as well as the keeper of the grove nearing level two purely from harassment without death coils a save I believe this ghoul could end up getting taken down. One more entangle would have been enough as the Keeper of the Grove now looking to back off to the north. Meanwhile, it looks as though in, um, uh, Jay Perez Imba finally having the time to do a little bit of creeping by himself. Going to get to level 2. Devotion Aura is in order. Uh, what Plus 2 armor across all of these units, making them that much more difficult to take down. Meanwhile, inbound coming in from Martial Spirit, who also has a potion of greater mana, 
that's going to be a lot of damage to be had as the footmen are now trying to dive on in perhaps just going after one rifleman no going after the paladin makes more sense as well the paladin still has plenty of mana to heal up those riflemen at least for now coming back down to the south here ziggurat was placed down archmage coming back over gonna try to drop some water elementals perhaps try and take the tier or get to level three first and you can see damage getting added up haunted gold mine is gonna end up getting canceled here acolyte has nowhere to run as the paladin well tries to push away this archmage all right haunted gold mine down to 200 hit points and dropping quickly martial spirit doing a good job shutting down the expansion before it even gets up and running and then maybe forced to use the scroll of town portal to head back out all right rifleman trying to back away we should be seeing the haunting of the gold mine once more but the gold mine is already up and operational mining has already mined 1000 gold and counting may have about a three to four uh, uh, about a three thousand gold advantage when the or a two thousand gold advantage when the time is finally up uh expansion still running underway here acolytes need to be well fully saturating that location in momentarily as well the paladin I'm gonna get itself together perhaps get a get a scroll of regeneration needs to see some priests as well to really start healing up here in just a moment meanwhile the well, archmage gets up to level three as the keeper of the grove and the archers now going to be working together fairly well keeper of the grove sitting at level one archmage sitting at level three meanwhile paladin and und and crypto are going to be coming in from the south level two level two going up against level three level two level one and in comes the units for an engagement are we going to see an impale yes we are there is a couple of impales two archers could easily get taken down and well are they going to get taken down that is the question as the footmen now turn around and have defend as well all right defend means that well the riflemen should only be going after the archers indeed as the archers are able to slip away a little bit of extra additional damage holy light trying to save as there is vampiric aura on martial spirits army paladin in a little bit of trouble gets caught by a rabbit and now going to be forced to retreat back once more we're going to see an archer get taken down no we are not a little bit of mismanagement there as really a Jay Perez Imba could have easily finished off some low hit point units with a, a little bit of additional focus fire but instead those units seem to be able to get away expansion 12,000 just now starting to mine meanwhile off to the north yeah about a 2,000 gold mine difference and, and it will continue to grow until well we see this fully saturated a lot of action in this 2v2 fight so far and that vampiric aura on the archmage gonna add a little bit of more longevity to this push but it doesn't look like martial spirit and what well, linger are quite ready for that if they can continue to just do a little bit of creeping that would that would really benefit them try to get these orange creep camps get the keeper of the grove to level three and the naga sea witch to level two that is what that is next on the on their agenda as linger well well getting a little bit denied right there tome of strength plus two keeping that keeper of the grove a bit more alive and well in terms of positioning and just and 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 space well it, it feels like Im Imba and Arepi um, are just um, confined to their neck of the woods. Only this side of the minimap um, are they actually comfortable um, wandering around. They're constantly getting scouted out. They're constantly being forced back. And this is giving higher hero levels to the human, human army. Archmage could easily go after this creep camp here. Footmen with the Fen Goblin Zeppelin. Are we going to see a little bit of a pickup here? Blood Mage going to be that third hero. Footman. Well, where is he running? As he well, throws up the Fen, but still gets taken down and accidentally giving level three to the Paladin. Goblin Zeppelin rounding around the corner. I believe the Paladin and the Rifleman did actually spot this. Dang it. Did not mean to zoom in as the, as the Goblin Zeppelin now making their way back in. Now time for metaphysics to say typical typical crota um video all right zeppelin now gonna instead drop back down off over here there is double nerubian towers um as well as zeppelin is gonna go ahead and drop right on in here are we out footman already in position archmage are we gonna see blizzard yes we are blizzard are we gonna see flame strike no no flame strike needed as damage is just adding up and it's gonna be siphon mana into the archmage archmage and it throws down a blizzard in pale but it, it misses the archmage right there as the as the blood mage now siphoning mana away from the crypt lord still all right gonna go, go ahead and continue to give mana once more there is more blizzard coming down and damage is just adding up slowly but surely as that damage could be coming across here there's more blizzard coming down 
and a beautiful play by Marshall Spirit shutting this play down here as the Acolytes are just trying to repair but also taking damage as well. Blizzard really raining down and destroying this base here in Warcraft 3 as some of the Acolytes could have been finished off with a well-timed Blizzard one or two more waves but opted to go for the Scroll of Town portal and escape instead. I don't know, taking down an additional two, two or three acolytes may have been um, the the order um, to, to try and finish up. Meanwhile, Blood Mage now in that front line absorbing quite a bit of damage. We should be looking at some holy light onto that Blood saying, when did I become the tank of this army? I don't know. The Paladin saying, don't worry, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. And well, I don't got you. I'm currently stunned. All right, coming back around, Blood Mage taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to get fully lighted once more, and the Granite Golem, well, continues to fight th things through. Kagar's Pipe of Insight, a brilliant item, pun wasn't intended, but enjoyed for that Paladin there. Blood Mage now sitting at level 2. All right, Imba actually expanding and feeling... A, a... Oh, thank you. All right. Um, feeling um, a bit, um, uh, it, uh, Imba actually feeling adventurous enough after that initial engagement. And, and now this is going to be one of those situations where is Linger and Martial Spirit, are they going to just uh, relax a little bit too much? Um, and give their opponent too much space to maneuver and accidentally uh, give them back the game. We are looking at the Archmage Vampiric Aura Immolation on the Paladin. Interestingly en interesting enough, Immolation on a Paladin. Paladin is often in that front line, but I don't know how, how much you want that Paladin to be surrounded by other units. Um, we are looking at four bases versus three, a Goblin Zeppelin overhead. No way to easily tell what is inside there at all. All right. Holy Light making their way over, reducing Mountain Giants. 55 over 70 supply. And I'm just curious about this. The army of Linger looks larger than 55. There's three Mountain Giants, two, uh, three heroes. Um, three heroes and some archers where how is that only 55 supply i don't really know as the army is ready to engage here all right gonna go ahead and battle it up mountain giants in that front line spot there are guard towers already here as well there goes a quick impale across multiple units there's a blizzard to rain down as well flame strike coming down flame strike going off the other way as well aoe and um, aoe damage battle going down here siphon mana removing mana from the from the priestess of the moon as a blood mage they continue to throw down flame strikes death knight falls at level one amongst all of the chaos as we're still looking at the units still trying to uh, well, dive their way in all right archmage walking and a well a flame strike onto a channeling archmage as that de as that well as that wasn't canceled in time more damage coming back through as imba is doing a great job here mountain giant still making their way through as the paladin being forced to try and retreat. Holy Light trying to save those units once more. Siphon mana away from the Blood Mage. Are we just going to see a Siphon mana go back the other way? There goes a Flame Strike Rifleman trying to dodge around as the Mountain Giants are still fighting. Paladin falls at level 1. That was the red side. Martial Spirit, as we see it in Tangle, go down onto the Crypt Lord. Crypt Lord absorbing quite a bit of damage. Knights are going after these units as the... As the well, I thought the Paladin had, had fallen already. Did it get resurrected again? Crypt Lord falls at level 4 now. So the, we have seen more hero death in this game than in many 1v1 matchups here as this is just an absolute bloodbath. Siphon mana trying to figure out who can keep who alive here as we're looking to look at well, a holy light saving that rifleman there. All right, additional armor. Paladin getting halfway to level four or halfway to level five. More battle getting underway. Knights trying to finish off some of those Crypt Fiends. And there's just so many Mountain Giants as the Crypt Lord and the Death Knight come back in here onto the battlefield. Death Knight now trying to retreat back once more. And again, as the, well, the Mountain Giants just racking up all of that damage. All right, we're looking at the units trying to retreat back. There's a Taunt Rifleman not going to have a very good day trying to hold the line here. Staff of Sanctuary saving a low hit point unit. Crypt Fiend trying to join in on the battle as we're going to be looking at well, a little bit of feedback damage coming back through. 
All right, turning back around in Tangle on right there. Siphon mana away once more as the Keeper of the Grove, or excuse, the Keeper of the Grove is in the back here. Priestess in the Moon sitting at 150 hit points could easily get burst down here if it's not very careful as the Siphon mana is creating just some sort of weird infinite loop there as a, another Flame Strike does go down. Blood Mage could be in trouble. No, takes a Holy Light here. Knights trying to finish off these Arcane Towers. There is another Flame Strike going down. Can't tell whose is whose as the Priestess of the Moon with Orb of Venom trying to finish things off. Or Priestess of the Moon down to 54 hit points. Finally gets Staff of Sanctuary away as the Keeper of the Grove able to stay, keep the alive. Blood Mage falls at level 3. All right. And Linger and with this Night Elf army just constantly pushing, finishing off Crypt Fiend after Crypt Fiend after Crypt Fiend. Death Quail saving that Crypt Lord as the units are now attempting to retreat back. Paladin is still trying to Holy Light, trying to save in more units. More Knights joining in on the battle. There goes one Dryad. Are we going to see a, a Mountain Dragon get taken down? No, we are not. He ends up fleeing with that Scroll of Town portal. All right, 62 supply over 70. Dry uh, Mountain Giants, 59 over 70. Knights, Mortar Teams, Mountain Giants. Uh, Archmage with Vampiric Aura helping the Knights and the Mountain Giants tremendously. Clarity Potions as Linger and Martial Spirit will be ready to, well, push on out here in, again in just a moment. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, if I was not watching the minimap for that battle at all, if anything happened, on, with the mini map during that time, I apologize. Um, that was that would just be a a, a a weird weird instance. Oh, it looks like they fixed. Yes, they fixed the time of day in replays. Like the 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 clock. The, like sometimes um, in replays, the time of day was actually broken. If if someone was using a moonstone and it didn't actually show, or the clock would still progress. All right, so it looks like that they, they have gone ahead and fixed that. Blizzard now coming down and, well, destroying uh, or well, at least preventing mining for this location here. And after all of that time to try and save this expansion, the expansion goes down without much of a fight and without much of, well, a punishment on, on that base. Even if you lose the expansion, what you want to be doing is you want to make sure that your opponent has to lose something, you make your opponent pay for taking out the expansion. That was pretty much a, a, an expansion ripe for the picking as we're looking at Linger now setting up an expansion of his own there. All right. Uh, how much gold is left? About five minutes in the in these main bases. And that is it. We still have this gold mine off over here, but it has not even, even, even been crept out yet as we're looking at well, Mountain Giants getting ready to push on through. Knights, 0-0 zero, zero upgrades with Vampiric Aura. We're going to, well, clear the trees. And here we are. I'm clearing the trees and trying to open up this engagement here. And that it should be enough. Inner Fire also across all of these mortar teams here. And we're going to be going into an engagement in just a second. Inner Fire here as well. Here we are. There is that fighting Inner Fire. Uh, well, Blizzard now raining down. Mountain Giants are magic resistance as the Knights are trying to get into position as well. Uh, Frostworms now coming in as well. Frostworms should be going after the mortar teams in the back. There's a big impale. Monstrous impale as well as the units are still trying to uh, well, engage here. Blizzard raining down across multiple units as this battle is just... Well, one one trying to save all of those knights. Knights get taken down. Staff of Sanctuary saves some more units as the Archmage, only sitting at level three, actually surrounded in a little bit of trouble. Is he going to use the Scroll of Town Portal? He is. Is it going to end up causing a little bit of problems as the uh, as the Knight Elf army? It does it have a way to get out? Yes, it does. Scroll of Town Portal onto that Keeper of the Grove as well, forcing the Red Army to retreat right here. Um, ghouls getting uh, denied uh, once more. We do see that the Tree of Life is nearly done as well. There are still red creep camps on the map. Who has the higher hero level? But level 4 uh, Crypt Lord, level 1 Death Knight, going and, and level 4 Paladin, level 3 Blood Mage going up against a level 4 Keeper of the Grove, level 4 Naga Sea Witch, level 2 Priestess of the Moon, level 3 Archmage, level 2 Paladin, and level 3 Blood Mage. All right, so six heroes for the Red Army. Meanwhile, only four heroes coming in from the Teal Army here as the engagement now getting underway. All right, a Blood Mage actually kind of stuck between all of these locations. He should have been trying to drop down a Flame Strike straight up onto that Archmage as that, as that Archmage was stuck right there. A Flame Strike was cast but not used in time. Death Knight of Teal falls 
at level one and there goes that flame strike across multiple units there and all of the priests simply standing there taking so much damage as they're trying to retreat back cross nova finishes off three priests and then well more priests and more mortar teams getting taken down however teal says you know what let's get out of here i do not want to stick around any longer and it looks as though they'll be leaving the party Another night lost in that engagement here. Meanwhile, peasants were looking to set up an expansion only to see a giant tree already with its roots entangling that gold mine. All right, peasants, well, they say, you know what? I'll just build a base here instead and, and try and force a fight if I need to. Imba uh, will most likely just end up canceling this as well as the knights are already here in play. Thank you for the follow. Mountain Giants now transitioning over. Supply count. Let's take a look. 67 supply for the Night Elf. 66 going up against a 79 for the Undead and a 58. So we are still overall about even on supply. Knights ready to well push on through. What's going to end up happening here? Um, well, a Potion of Invulnerability. You cannot leave that behind. Tome of Strength. Those are two very big items, especially for the Death Knight who has been falling left and right. Going to go ahead and pick that up and pick that up as well. All right. Undead now making their way off to the north here. Um, are we going to see human uh, working their way together. Are we doing a split prong attack? It looks like it is going to be a split prong attack here, taking down the arcane vault as flying machines are trying to take to the skies. Scout also scouting out down across over here. Is it going to be two separate 1v1 fights? It does look like that is going to be the case. There is no mortar teams amongst here as the mountain giants. Well, what's going to end up going down? They're going to just go after here. And well, Martial Spirit um, doesn't really seem to care about his base right now. And that's going to continue just give more and more here. We are looking at Lich sitting at level two. Death Knight still sitting at level one. Meanwhile, this uh, Tree of Eternal or Tree of Life was taken down very quickly. Blood Mage, uh, well, all of these Wisps getting taken down very fast as well. Is the Paladin going to get the level five here? No, he is not. Just a little bit shy as there is a little... There is a bit of overcommitment here, finally pulling back through, but this is going to give an opportunity. No, he take it. Imba could have tried to put pressure onto this base here after both Scrolls of Town Portals or, or the Scroll of Town Portal was burned to head back to the human base. He could have put pressure, but there just simply wasn't um, any mortar teams or anything that could do range damage against these Moonwells. 72 supply over 70. Uh, Paladin is here. Blood Mage is here. Level 2 Flame Strike should be going down across these buildings here pretty quickly as the Chimera joins in on the battle. Ancient of War quickly going to get taken down. And, well, getting so very close to level 5 is that Paladin. All right, Paladin. Um, well, how much more does he really need? Uh, needs a little bit more here as we're going to be going into an engagement. Uh, Hippogriff. Well, no, not Hippogriffs. Destroyer is not trying to retreat back. Chimera is easily going to be able to rip apart that Abomination. Abomination pretty much getting stunned down as the Priestess of the Moon now gets up to level 3 for level 2 True Shot Aura, giving the Chimeras plus 17 damage in between True Shot Aura and Inner Fire. All right, 9 armor plus 17 damage. Chimera is really going to be racking up that damage easily as well as the units are giving chase once again. Coming back around, flying machines, well, staying together here. Meanwhile, Teal making its way off to the north. And also, yeah, just Teal, human, just making its way off to the north. Undead actually hanging back here. And what is going on? The Paladin is going to go ahead and try and venture forth, perhaps try and take down a bit of this base here. Take down the Arcane Tower, um, and there's a Flame Strike, and that is going to be a bunch of dead peasants. Level 5 now on the Paladin, level 4 still on that Blood Mage, but a lot of damage to be added here. Meanwhile, Flying Machines going after all of the, well, the Flying Units here. They need to find some cover um, as well, as the units are now looking to back up. Meanwhile, Flame Strike coming back down and taking down the Expansion. Imba doing hit and run tactics, seemingly working without really losing all that much. One knight. Oh, one knight did get left behind. And well, there goes that knight right there. No, no additional levels given, but that knight was well walking a bit too far away. Oh, what is this tree of eternity currently not rooted? And what does that mean? It means that it's gonna take a lot of magic damage very quickly, and it could get taken down before the expansion goes off or the, the scroll of town portal goes off, and it does in fact get lost right there. The frost worms 
with that cold attack able to shut down that tree of eternity from being able to root keeping it in fort in heavy armor maximizing its damage that freezing breath right there causing the problem all right more damage to be had still taking down these moon wells is incredibly important full moon wells represent hit points and mana that can be used in a fight uh, uh, the freezing breath perhaps the frost room should actually be attacking different trees to try and prevent some of that damage meanwhile this expansion here ziggurats trying to upgrade the spirit tower is really not going to matter all that much damage still adding up here you can look at all of this freezing breath stopping all of uh, well stopping these units pretty much in its tracks as well and the human and undead army really just pushing its way through if we turn this into a base race scenario it feels like teal has a more um, has more buildings um, and and because of that he can just simply win um, even if it is going to be some efficient trading death knight finally at level two with unholy aura allowing this army to move that much faster meanwhile scroll of town portal coming back home it looks like there are two scrolls of town portal right there um, yes there goes one there goes two go one going high one going to and um, one going east as the engagement getting ready and in position here fly machines going after chimeras priests are also here as well fly machines coming back on the other side webs coming down Who's going to win out on this battle? Flying machine or the, the frost farms actually switching every which way. And now they should actually be attacking to try and prevent any sort of slow as flame strikes now throwing down as well. Crazy matchup here as a paladin. Well, stunned amongst all of this now trying to retreat back out. Archmage going to be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, down to 346 hit points. Holy Light trying to save Potion of Lesser and Vulnerability is going to be saved as the Blood Mage going to get taken down amongst this battle. There goes an Impale as more units are going to taken down. Level 4 Blood Mage, as I mentioned, taken out already as the Death Knight well, makes its way back over. Fork Lightning trying to finish off the Death Knight. Death Knight has a Potion of Lesser and Vulnerability trying to stay alive, gets up to level 3, continuing this battle once more. Um, still, Flying Machine going after those units. Blizzard impaling or raining down onto all of these units in that back line. Level 2 Blizzard dealing quite a bit of damage still as it looks as though, well, I, I believe Red has the advantage here with just more units out onto the battlefield. Flame Strike, however, might be able to finish off this last Obsidian Statue, slowly burning into death. Teal losing a, well, wow, Obsidian Statue able to save, stay alive at six hit points as the, well, Death Knight falls at level three. Units are retreating back once more. Not very many buildings up. Another Flame Strike goes down. Teal losing, um, well, almost losing a Knight right there, but Holy Light saving Blood Mage. Gonna siphon some more mana again as the Paladin sits at level five trying to constantly staff a sanctuary but he himself gets taken out after what seems like a forever and a day battle crypt lord however now sitting at level six are we going to be looking at a uh, locust swarm no crypt lord trying to retreat back he does use locust swarm but it wasn't in time enough to actually get any hit points and a level six crypt lord falls as well there goes a knight and the plethora of the red heroes still alive after all this time. Level 5 Keeper of the Grove, level 5 Archmage, level 5 Naga Sea Witch, level 4 Priestess of the Moon, level 4 Blood Mage, level 3 Paladin. Uh, are all six heroes still together? Yes, they are. All right. Car the heroes carrying the team here flame strike and blizzard trying to shut things down trying to stop the altar of darkness from being able to resurrect forcing them to try and resurrect at the tavern which is well cost prohibitive as the lich gets taken down as well this should be the beginning of the end another hero bites the dust for teal and well all you need are heroes six heroes working together as the well there's the gg a beautiful beautiful game here and dota no dota here dota only has five heroes on one team we saw six so yeah a, a game of heroes um coming in between martial spirit and a linger a beautiful well played a game and it, it was really the heroes carrying that game there linger um taking a look at the hero levels five four three five five four we did see the um a crypt lord lich a death knight but that death knight was stuck at level one for so long finally got to level three at the end before falling meanwhile in the um using the paladin and blood mage very effectively and this game was back and forth for quite some time in the end the hero and management of martial spirit and linger comes on through for 
the victory. Just joined. Uh, yes, you will be catching these on YouTube. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, remember to like, comment. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys enjoy 2v2s? Um, or would you guys rather see more 1v1s? Um, and that is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you for the, the raid. Um, that was absolutely absolutely great. Thank you for thank you for the sub. And I'll catch you guys next time.